We've talked about a lot of different kinds of lost media on the channel before, because lost media comes in all different shapes and sizes. There are the topics that everyone knows about, then the fan favorites, and of course, the really bizarre stuff that catches the eye simply for how strange it is. While I don't cover this kind of lost media too often, last year was really my first dive into the area of really weird and awkward looking shows that make you question why on earth they even exist or were made in the first place. And to my surprise, I happened to come across a pretty large variety of equally bizarre, and in some cases even more bizarre, pieces of lost media that I just have to talk about for that fact. Some of these topics were requests from you guys, and others were just weirdness I stumbled on while searching for other things. So with that said, let's get into the weirdness with the first topic that really reignited my whole interest in these kinds of strange searches. Sometimes it seems like when you purposely go out of your way to find weird topics, you never come across them, and it's only when you least expect it when they show up. This one takes us to one of my recent live streams, where the viewers will often request that I go read certain articles on the Lost Media Wiki and discuss them with everyone. Well, this topic that was requested was so strange it left me laughing. I had to research the topic further and spread the word about this entirely lost series from Uruguay, called Don't Bother Me Mosquito in English. This show is a 2004 CGI series developed by Animalada and follows two mosquitoes named John and Paul who constantly target a man named Joe Bigman with their antics, as Joe tries endlessly to squash them once and for all. A total of 26 episodes were released for the series, each one spanning 5 minutes in length. But I'm sure most of you have actually come across this topic before from a completely different place. I had never heard about this existing until my stream informed me of it, but apparently a band named Loco Loco released two music videos that featured clips from this series in them, titled Mosquito and It Burns Burns Burns. These have become well-known memes online, and is where the mosquitoes gain their popularity from. However, what you might not have known is that these music videos contain some of the only footage of the show that's still around today. The Lost Media Wiki article does have an episode chart that can be viewed as a reference for how much of the series is lost, and according to the chart, literally every single episode from the series is missing. In fact, the series is so lost, the latter half of the episode titles aren't even known. But the titles of the known episodes do come from Animalata's official website from the Wayback Machine, so we can confirm those as being official. But what's even more interesting is the offer listed on the top of that page. According to the website, it says that each episode's script is fully developed, but available only on request of the full series bible. I'm sure nobody has ever reached out to this company before to get those scripts, but if they had, we'd at least have some of the content from the episodes, instead of almost nothing at all. But what's even more notable here is the existence of that pitch bible which would be the earliest interpretation of the series that exists. This has probably never been seen before, and I'm sure no part of it has ever been posted. With a Google search, it looks like Animalata is still around, and lists it burns 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 on their website, so this is the same company. I wonder if they would have any of the actual episodes in an archive, in addition to that pitch bible after all these years. Additionally, the lore of the show is further added to with one of the only pieces of content we actually have from it, a collection of images that were ripped from a promotional CD. These are comedy gold, and it makes me think they were intended to be used on greeting cards or to send each other in emails. A lot of them have commonly used sayings on them, but if you look through them all, it illustrates the battle between the mosquitoes and Joe Bigman, along with showing the relationship status of the two mosquitoes themselves. I guess the tall one really dislikes the short one, while the short one simps for the taller one. There's also this hilarious shot of one of them taking aim at the rear end of a female character, which is just a hilariously awkward piece. The Get Lost one also hits home a little for me, since it feels like the tall mosquito is casting a despicable aura that prevents lost media from being found. Maybe he's the reason why we can't get a copy of Me and My Friends. Overall, this is a really strange show in both visual appearance and rarity, but with the popularity the meme maintained, I wouldn't be surprised if more people end up finding new content from it out of appreciation for the meme. For all you dub fans out there, here's a topic that is so visually unappealing, at least to me anyway, 
When I first saw it, I thought it was completely made up. This was an article I had never come across before until it was requested that I look it up on stream. And the visuals looked so awful, I actually thought it was a troll just to get my live reactions when I saw it for the first time. But no, that's not true at all. Apparently, it's a completely real show that was somehow popular enough to get several international dubs, one of which has remained elusive and unreleased onto home media for all these years. I would be surprised if anyone told me they grew up watching this show, but I suppose it's possible given its wide release, as well as total episode count. This is called X Duck X, a French comedy cartoon about ducks playing sports that was released in 2001 and co-produced by seven different companies. It follows two anthropomorphic ducks named Slacks and Gista, who participate in a variety of extreme sports and are apparently so good they quickly encounter a rival named JT Thrash, who is constantly plotting against them to get first place. I guess the X in the title is in reference to the extreme sports that are played in each episode. And comparing that to some screenshots we have, it definitely seems to be that way. The animation looks really wild, the designs are a little gross looking, and overall it just has that weirdly abstract style to it. I guess it really is an extreme kind of cartoon. Originally, the series broadcast its complete 78 episode count in France on the channel France 3 and Fox Kids, before making its debut on Super RTL in Germany and ABC Network in Australia. But this is where the mystery begins, because like I mentioned before, those worldwide broadcasts means different dubs had to be made, and that leads us to the lost media. Unlike Don't Bother Me Mosquito, where we only have a few visuals to work with, in addition to these screenshots, we actually have every episode from the series available in one language as far as I can tell, that one being Russian. For some reason, the show got a complete series release on DVD in Russia, and an image of that can even be seen online. However, the other dubs weren't so lucky with their release, including the most desired of the bunch, English. The German dub did see a DVD release for episode 1-39, to however, the remaining 40-78 to were missing from that. Though over the years, it seems like almost all of the German episodes have found their way onto YouTube from home recordings, but there are still a few that appear to be missing. As for the original French version, that one seems to be missing almost in its entirety. I couldn't even find any specific playlist that had French episodes in it. Considering there was no DVD release for that region, it's probably in the same hard to find spot as the English dub, which currently, only 6 of the 78 English episodes are available. These came from two different YouTube accounts that had English episodes recorded on VHS tapes, and that's likely how the remaining English episodes will be found at all. So in total, the entire series is available in Russian, only a few episodes are missing in German, 6 have been found in English, and French seems to be just as rare as English, though I couldn't find any full uploads for that. I even searched for the French name of the series on YouTube, thinking some hidden playlist would come up, but nothing did. With the exception of the Russian dub having been uploaded in full from the DVD release, the majority of the episodes that have been recovered from the wild are from the German dub, so it must have been pretty popular over there, despite not having a complete series DVD release. For the next topic on the list, let's talk about a bizarre lost video game, since there are a lot of lost games that are considered strange or weird. In fact, there are a lot of released games that are considered strange or weird, but it's for the fact that this one never came out which makes it particularly interesting, especially since it looks like it got really far into its build. But unlike what you might be expecting out of a weird lost video game topic, this isn't some obscure Mario title or a game series you've even heard about before, and instead, it's something you might know from a cell phone marketing campaign. Back in the mid and late 2000s, if you watched channels like Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, chances are you came across ads for singing CGI characters that you could get as ringtones on your phone by texting a number. These are from a company called Jamba, known as Jamster in the US, and were really popular during the time the ads were being played on TV, and have been able to maintain a well-known online status nowadays. If you have no idea what I'm talking about though, the most popular of the Jamster characters include Schnuffle Bunny, Moly, and of course Crazy Frog. So even if you've never seen these guys before, you've probably heard about them somewhere. Now for the most part, 
the Jamster characters didn't exist that much outside of the cell phone ads, with the exception of some merchandise and CD releases of their songs. But maybe that wouldn't have been the case if a cancelled PS2 game based on some of the characters had released. This is Jamster All-Stars, a 2007 adventure platformer game that was going to be developed by Mercury Games. According to the website that used to exist promoting the game, the plot had the Jamster All-Stars making their way through a series of challenges to discover who has stolen all the musical notes so that they can continue to make ringtones. It's a pretty basic story and gameplay style for a game like this, but it fits well with other kinds of games from this genre back in the day. However, what was most confusing to me about the whole project is that it omits their most popular characters, Schnufflebunny, Molly, and Crazy Frog. At first I thought that was just poor decision making during development, but apparently Schnufflebunny and Molly didn't even exist when the game was being made in the mid-2000s. They didn't come out until the years following. It could also be for this reason that the game was cancelled, as it's been stated the cancellation came from the result of Jamster's low popularity at the time, and it wouldn't be revived until Schnufflebunny's release. However, Crazy Frog was apparently in the game, seemingly as a secret character based on a low-quality screenshot from the official website that was found on a Japanese blog. Apparently, this says, Crazy Frog has stolen all of the music from the magical musical world. But that's all we know about Crazy Frog's involvement in the game, and this is one of the only pieces of content we have from the website at all. An interactive website was made to promote the game in the late 2000s, but needed a file named Jamsite v 2 swf to operate, and that wasn't archived by the Wayback Machine, so most of the assets from the site are inaccessible. But the website was not the only way the game was promoted. A couple articles were written about it, and detailed its upcoming release back in 2007, so we do have a little more content to see. Here we get to check out some of the level designs and characters standing in each of them. The characters were said to have special abilities and could be swapped between at any point in the level. There were also 12 different levels in 3 different environments, with some of the levels being the home stages for the characters. With the exception of this content that's been collected over the years, there isn't anything else we have from it, or can use to play the game itself. It's speculated that there might have been a full trailer posted to the website, but we can't access that so it's not known. It's also not known if a playable version of the game even still exists anymore. The game itself had apparently pushed back its release date from September to November at one point, so it's not entirely clear how finished it was in the first place to get that delay. Its developer, Mercury Games, has also gone out of business since its cancellation, so the only chance at getting this unearthed for all the PS2 era platformer fans would be to find old Mercury Games employees and hope that one of them still has a build wherever those assets might be. The next topic I want to talk about is maybe one of the most unnecessary and most unwanted pieces of media of all time, so the fact that it was ever being planned at all is really an enigma. In fact, some people online go as far to say it's a good thing this never came out simply for the fact of how poorly it would have been, and for how much people would have disliked it. Though nowadays there's a whole market for awful looking content, so maybe in that way it's a bit unfortunate this one was never finished. Anyway, this series that this piece of lost media is based around is maybe more surprising than the fact that this content was going to be made at all, and that series is Elf Bowling. Now it's weird to think about myself feeling nostalgic for this game, considering it's not the kind of thing I would have been interested in playing, but for some reason, my grandparents had this game on their old Windows XP computer back in the day, and us kids loved playing it. So you can imagine my surprise when I found out that there's a CGI movie based on the game that was made back in 2007. Which went straight to DVD as you could expect, and was universally hated by everyone. I've never seen the movie before, but just from looking at the quality of its screenshots, I'm not surprised people dislike it so much. But would you believe that even for as poorly as the first movie did, a sequel was being made, and that's where the lost media for this series comes from. In the summer of 2007, a few months before the first Elf Bowling movie would be released, a sales promo containing the trailer of the film was uploaded to YouTube, which was used to pitch the film to distributors and shows an official intro card as well. However, at the end of the trailer, right before it ends, the narrator announces that coming in 2007, a sequel movie would be releasing titled Elf Bowling 2, The Great Halloween Pumpkin Heist. 
Nothing else related to the sequel is shown in the trailer, with the exception of this one screen with the logo. And after that, it was never seen again. If it wasn't for its mention in this trailer, we'd have no idea it was even being planned at all. But if we take a closer look at its development, it becomes even more unclear how early on in its production the movie was cancelled. The date listed in the sales promo as to when this piece itself was finalized is April 2006, with the announcement for the second movie to come out in Fall 2007. So it seems that the first movie, which came out in Fall 2007, was originally supposed to be released earlier, and could have been finished long before its deadline. This would have given the animators more time to work on the sequel movie, resulting in content from it having been made. But then by the time the Christmas movie did see release and given its reviews, maybe the studio halted production on the sequel and cancelled it right there, leaving us with no additional content. While we don't know for sure if the delay in the first movie's release could have been the result of production issues or trying to find distributors, I'm guessing that something beyond this one announcement from over a year prior was probably made in between. But we don't know for sure, because no other content from it has resurfaced. There hasn't even been any other mention about it from the studio or animators or anything that's publicly known. When I first looked into the topic, I thought it was going to be one of those intentionally poor budget films that get sequel after sequel just for the sake of making them. But now it seems like there was actually some kind of reason why everything got delayed and cancelled. In fact, they even got Tom Kenny to voice in the movie. That's kind of cool. Still, the whole concept is weird, and I'm sure even with a more advanced studio, it probably still wouldn't have been great to watch, but there seems to be more here than just what the articles tell. So maybe within time, more interest in its content will lead to new finds. Who would have thought that we'd actually have pieces of lost media from Brazil in this video? But I have another topic that I wanted to include for its absurdity. And that old feeling from the early 2000s that every popular series or fad was somehow connected to a larger malicious plan from the corporate overlords. A really common example of this is how Pokemon constantly fought with religion here in the States, but in Brazil there was a similar battle raging over another series like Pokemon where you collect monsters. That one being Yu-Gi-Oh. Just like here in the US, Yu-Gi-Oh became a huge hit in Brazil when it released in 2003 both the anime and the card game itself. Of course, the cards are mostly what drove the success of the series, because you could buy them, play the game, and trade them with friends. I remember back in elementary school, they put a ban on the game entirely because it was a distraction for kids who played it, and it led to many arguments on the playground from angry kids who felt like they got ripped off in trade deals. Anyway, Yu-Gi-Oh! had a similar battle to Pokemon when it came to religious groups, because of fears over the cards themselves and what they depict. Most notably, claims of there being references to the devil or satanic symbolism. And as a result of all this hysteria over the cards, a TV program called Good Evening Brazil decided to capitalize on the craze and run a segment that discussed how evil these cards supposedly were. According to the Lost Media Wiki thread about this topic, the host of the broadcast, Gilberto Barros, went on to discuss how the card game is connected to Satanism, Occultism, and the Yakuza. Additionally, a Reddit thread that recollected the broadcast even mentioned how they showed a clip of Dragon Ball claiming to be from Yu-Gi-Oh! and showed a scene where a villain controlled Gohan and made him attack Goku, of which the news segment claimed the cards led players to attack their parents. This is such a bizarre scare tactic that's classic of that early 2000s era, and it's for that wackiness that people want to watch the whole segment. But unfortunately, you can't, and this is where the mystery begins. Apparently when this broadcast first aired, it spread around in church communities and the internet back in the day, and you could even find videos of kids destroying their cards, a possible side effect that the widespread of the broadcast had in itself. However, nobody can find a copy of that actual broadcast, and nobody in the community seems to have it either. We know that the program was made by a company called TV Banderites, also known as Band, who is still around today. However, Good Morning Brazil ended in 2006, so it's not known where exactly the recordings or archives of that show are, and it's been a very long time since the show ended. Though the Lost Media Wiki thread did mention that there have been users who claim to have a copy of the recording, but none have shown up, and I'm guessing these claims were never proven to be legit either. Currently, the only visual we have from the news report 
is a single screenshot of Gilberto in the center of the frame, with text beneath that reads, Meet the cards of the devil called Yu-Gi-Oh! Brazilian Lost Media is definitely growing in popularity compared to years ago, so I would be surprised if this one stays missing for too much longer, especially if more awareness is spread about it. And with that said, those are some of the most bizarre Lost Media topics I've come across since the last time we talked about others in the same category. I'm sure there are so many more topics like this that are out there that most people would never come across. Let me know if you have a really strange or weird topic you'd like me to cover, and I'll see about making another follow-up video. It's kind of fun taking a break from the main topics every now and then, to explore something we'd never come across otherwise, and to get some laughs out of them as well. But until more of these weird topics can be unearthed from dedicated supporters of them, they'll definitely remain a mystery. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out some of my other Lost Media videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Finn.